from keeping us on the edge of our seats for ages to Raymond Reddington finally meeting his fate, here's the Blacklist ending explained. NBC's long-running epic crime thriller has kept us on the edge of our seats for quite a while now. The show features Raymond Red Reddington, played by none other than James Spader, he's got a seriously shady past. Once a hotshot U.S. Naval Intelligence officer, Reddington takes a wild detour and becomes a high-profile criminal. Like the Houdini of the crime world, he manages to escape capture for several years, but then, out of the blue, he surrenders himself to the FBI. Why? Well, here's where it gets interesting. He's got a little gift for his law-enforcing friends, something called a blacklist. Confused, it's basically like a VIP list, but instead of having party guests, it's filled with names of dangerous criminals from all over the planet. Quite the nifty gift for the FBI. Now he collaborates with Elizabeth Keene, played by the talented Megan Boone, who, by the way, bid farewell to the show before season 9, but I'll get into that later. For now, all you need to know is that she's a total rock star of an agent and partners with Red to catch these criminals one by one. Almost like a match made in crime fighting heaven. While Red's got all this dirt on the world's most wanted criminals, that said it was created by John Bokenkamp and premiered on NBC in 2013. The roller coaster ride of crime, unlikely friendships, and intrigue easily made the show one of the most popular ones to date. This popularity has only grown since its premiere in part thanks to a stellar cast. In addition to Boone and Spader, the cast also features Diego Klatenhoff, Anya Banerjee, Ryan Eggold, and Clark Middleton. But despite the show's massive popularity, the network dropped a bomb in February 2023 by announcing that it was being canceled after 10 seasons. Showrunner John Eisendrath gave an emotional statement about the show's decision to end. He revealed that, after 10 long years, with hundreds of amazing blacklist cases spanning over 200 episodes, it was time to say goodbye. He also claimed how fun it was to create the devious and delightful blacklisters that would challenge Red each week. After the announcement, Spader also added that, had the show kept going beyond 10 seasons, it would have done a total 180 and turned into something completely different. Honestly, that makes a lot of sense because the coolest thing about the show was its ever-changing vibe. One week you could be on the edge of your seat with all that heart-pounding action, and the next week you could be deep in thought, trying to figure out those seriously intense twists. That's exactly what made the show so special. Spader also gave major props to the popular TV TV series for being one of those shows where you could jump in anytime and still enjoy the story. But for those of us hardcore fans who've been on this adventure from the get-go, it's been a long and satisfying journey with its fair share of mind-blowing moments. And let's not forget the fact that the show had to undergo a major transformation because Bokenkamp and Megan Boone both left the series to explore other opportunities. While it was a mutual decision between Boone and the showrunners, the Blacklist still had to work out certain kinks to adjust the storyline following Keane's departure. The good thing, though, was that Boone's exit was decided ahead of Season 9's renewal. That way, the writers could carefully plan her character's storyline in Season 8 and not only give the audience the time for an epic farewell, but also plenty of closure to process the narrative. And now that the show has ended, let's take a deep dive into the action-packed two-hour Season 10 finale to find out exactly what happened in that ending. Well, it was a lot. In the final chapter of the show, the task force is on the hunt for one of their own, criminal genius Reddington. In Season 10, Wu Jing found himself some allies, other blacklisters, and they all got together to hunt Red down. After shutting down the task force to protect the agents, he's on the loose himself, and FBI agent Nixon, along with Congressman Hudson, are eager to find him before it's too late. After blowing up a plane to fake his death with the help of his former bodyguard a few days prior, Red gets in touch with Demby once again, and the bodyguard warns him that the FBI is after him. Yikes! There's no doubt that Demby's a loyal dude, and he's got Red's back no matter what. But Red's also thinking about the consequences of his actions on Demby's life. Friendship goals right there. Now, Demby isn't blindly following Red's lead. In fact, he's got his principles and tells Red that if he gets the chance, he'll arrest him. So Demby warns the FBI that Red's a crafty one, and he's going to try to use all sorts of escape routes, disguises, and his crazy network of connections to stay one step ahead. Well, that's exactly what happens. Red misdirects the feds by playing some next-level games, like setting up several clones of his vehicle all over the city, leaving the FBI agents seriously frustrated. Genius! When they finally catch a lead that he's been staying at Paula Carter's house, Glenn Carter's mother. 
Red bolts before the FBI agents get there. The feds try to outsmart him by showing up at his safe house, only to discover that it's going up in flames. Who sets their own safe house on fire? Red, obviously. Raymond once again flees the scene most unexpectedly, dressed as a firefighter and walks away unscathed. And the FBI is too late once again. The epic showdown goes up a notch when the FBI gets a hunch that one of their own is probably helping Red. After tracking a phone call, they discover Dembe was the one who warned Red at the airfield. He's arrested and transported to HQ for further questioning. But while they're en route, the vehicle carrying Dembe, Wrestler, and the other FBI agents is T-boned on the highway by none other than Red. He emerges from the dust and debris, pulling Dembe from the wreckage. And just when you think it's going to be all high fives and hugs, Dembe throws a curveball and refuses to leave with Red. Hudson sees this as an opening and grabs a gun to shoot Dembe in the neck. Obviously, Red's not going to let that slide, and without a second thought, fatally shoots Hudson in the head. He also gets Wrestler a couple of times in his bulletproof vest. As Red rushes to get Dembe urgent medical attention at the nearest nursing home, they discover that Dembe needs a blood transfusion. Since they're a match, Red steps up and quickly volunteers to donate his blood. Saved by an impromptu transfusion, Cooper and Wrestler arrive at the nursing home to see Dembe in the middle of surgery. The nurse tells them that although Red was a perfect match, he shouldn't have donated blood because he was displaying symptoms of oxygenation and shortness of breath. This is when things seriously start going downhill for the ex-criminal. While Agent Nixon is fixated on taking Red down by any means necessary, Red had fled to Villa Lobo in Spain to live in a small village, but he's constantly coughing up blood, indicating that he isn't well. Finding himself in one of the local bull ranches, Red comes face to face with an angry one. The animal and he lock eyes for a long moment, until the bull charges at Red, who stood there, unafraid. And while they don't show the exact moment when he was killed, the next scene tells us that Red's crumpled body has been discovered by Wrestler, who was hovering in a helicopter from above. What a wild goose! Goose chase. Wrestler confirms to the feds that Raymond Reddington is really and truly dead. He finally got his bittersweet ending, meeting his fate on his terms and not in a prison cell, which is exactly the only way he could have gone out. While we never really find out what happened to the task force, it's interesting to note that the Blacklist's final takedown was Red himself. Naturally, the fans had their own two cents about the action-packed finale. One social media user pointed out that none of the hardcore Blacklist fans wanted Red to die in the first place. They saw him getting away on a remote island, drink in hand, making the best of his life, and never wanted him to get caught by the other side of the FBI. But the good thing was that he died the way he wanted to die. The fans pointed out there was also meaning in the blood transfusion. By giving his blood to Demby, he had saved his life, but not his own. And those last two hours kept everyone on the edge of their seats. Knowing that he was going to die soon, but kept going anyway, in the end, his death came in the most reddest way possible. So there you have it, from Raymond Reddington finally meeting his fate to keeping us on the edge of our seats for ages. That was the Blacklist's ending, explained.